Yeah, you're pulling tight. Oh, there we go. You figure it out. Oh yeah, we've got more unbranched bamboos here. Mm-hmm. And a beautiful polyopagon. Oh wait. Uh, I think so. I agree. Yeah. And a really small balsam. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure enough. And some sort of fish going off into the distance. So we've got a little bit of time left in the dive before we have to go off bottom. We have to uh, start ascending no later than uh, about 10.45. So it's about 10.11 right now. Uh, Yeah, Kuku, you said the last rock sample was taken on just under 1,600 meters. Ah, I can go double check. Yeah, because we're we're still more or less at that uh, at yeah. that uh, uh, depth. Yeah, I think it was uh, 1595. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's. Um, yeah, we're at It's pretty similar to where we are right now. So. so. Yeah. And then last Niskin was taken at uh, 1,800 meters. Okay. Yeah. Have we done any background Niskins? I don't believe so. Okay. Yeah, we, we might be able to get one on the way up. Sounds yeah. good. Thanks. I'll go text uh, Taylor to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yeah, so for anyone uh, listening, so one of the one of the things that we are also collecting on this uh, cruise are is uh, we're taking some water samples, which we'll use to uh, do some analyses on environmental DNA, which is one of these really cool resources and tools to look at all the different organisms uh, within an area that are um, maybe shedding skin cells, maybe uh, eating a sloppy and that's contributing to some of the DNA that gets uh, is just floating around in the water column. And so um, there's a researcher who's collecting some of these this uh, environmental DNA in the water. And so what we do is we'll collect the Niskin on, um, at different depths within the RV. And then uh, back on, on the boat, we will uh, we'll filter the water. And uh, that filter will then go into a solution and get shipped off to uh, the researcher who will then um, 
amplify and extract the DNA, um, and then um, you know, amp uh, we'll look into the different uh, types of organisms within this area, which is exceptionally interesting. Um, yeah, so it's it's pretty it's a pretty exciting pretty exciting field of science. It's uh, it can be, there are many uses for it. One is just, uh, you know, figuring out what's in the community. What what um, what organisms are floating around? You know, it might catch that uh, that chimera that we saw, some of these Walteria sponges and um, the uh, these primnoic bamboos. Um, it can also catch a whale yeah. or a krill, um, bacteria, depending on what sort of, uh, what sections of DNA you're amplifying. Um, so it can look at, you know, the entire region um, or the entire, you know, water column, all, all that information. You can also use it to look for specific um, invasive species. Um, I think there are groups that are using it for um, some invasive crabs in uh, shallow water. Oh, wow. Um, wow. And uh, different um, management zones to check, you know, just to check and see if these crabs are around and then go do smaller, you know, mm -hmm. smaller management. Uh, more focused management based on those assessments. Yeah, and that um, helps with the uh, like uh, tracking like disease through wastewater, right? Right. Yes, I think we've seen um, that there are several cities uh, in the U.S. that I know of that are using um, that are taking now for that they are taking uh, samples of water and they are specifically looking for um, uh, individual. Um, uh, you know, viruses or, or bacteria, mm -hmm. um, specifically amplifying for those um, types of types of items. But um, yeah, you know, it's uh, it's pretty interesting the, the many ways that they're using environmental DNA. Mm -hmm. But one of the key things that you need, um, and one of the one of the one of the resources that this cruise is providing is. Um, uh, to understand one, the background information, you know, what what are what do we just see when we, when we can't see anything, right? Um, that helps get an idea of the the scale of you know the the input, the mm -hmm. how far that this single water sample is collecting. Um, but then also it helps us when we can see organisms to attach. Um, that DNA sequence to the organisms within view, um, right? And, and yeah. so, what one of the other one of the aspects they're doing is um, uh, they're creating libraries, genetic libraries, basically for this environmental DNA samples, and that's so important because that means that we can continue to do these studies using the already created in um, a library. That's awesome. Yeah, no. It yeah, it's it's such a great broad spectrum tool with the uh, uh, pretty minimally invasive uh, sampling methods. Absolutely, I yeah. think it's so useful. I think it could be something that we could use on uh, um, and an even smaller scale. You know, go right up to next to a coral potentially and collect a water sample and, mm -hmm. and use that instead of you know. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Val, are you doing the? Um, pebble versus nodule um yeah calculation in your brain right now yes um, what's winning <laughs> based on uh, recent experience uh times two uh fragment pebble fragment yeah mm -hmm. now the nodules like this that can what kind of information can you get from that that's different from a pebble fragment um, with the with the manganese nodules, uh, those can be used to investigate uh, 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 the compositions, like the types of manganese crusts that uh, uh, we're getting in this part of the Pacific, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, just a better understanding uh, uh, the prime crust zone, its distribution, its uh, development. Oh, so. that's really fantastic. That's really interesting. Yeah, okay. and and, for, and here uh, this is uh, absolutely for. Um, conservation purposes because uh mm -hmm. yeah um yeah absolutely yeah this, so this is this is a preserve that is and, and making sure that we're um protecting these spaces that um yeah you know, um, 
you know, nodules can have very distinct habitats and can, of, um, they are distinct habitats that can create very distinct communities mm -hmm. um, on and around the nodules. And, um, you know, it's important to make sure that we're protecting all the, all the many habitats around nodules. Um, yeah. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that. The fact that, you know, um, while the seamounts we're on currently might not be part of the Pacific crust or pac prime crust zone, um, there are seamounts within within the monument that actually could are within the prime crust zone and, and do require those protections. Yep. Oh, um, wow. That is a tall coral. That is. It keeps wow. going. <laughs> like the Energizer Bunny. Ooh. Hello. So beautiful. Oh, uh, fish. <laughs> Yeah, the mics are really picking up those siblings, aren't they? I have a question for you guys. Do you, why do you feel that these spaces, I mean, with all of like your expertise and background and research, why do you feel like these spaces need to be protected? Oh my gosh, there's so many ways I could start to answer that. <laughs> I don't know where to start. I mean, Yeah, so one of the things is just that if they're not actively protected, um, then that kind of... Okay, that's an urchin, for yes, sure. Yes, that is an <laughs> yeah. urchin, yeah. Sorry. You know, it's that, you know, then it, then it's left unprotected. Um, and and, and um, we, we have been aware that, you know, there are some people who... If, if they see an opportunity to collect a resource, they're going to. And I think it's important to understand what's there and understand how all of these different, uh, uh, you know, how all of these different systems work together in the ocean, uh, you know, uh, geology and, uh, you know, the microbes, uh, uh, the macrobes, you know, macrofaunal biology. Um, you know, how, how that all connects together. And, uh, you know, it's it's critical to make sure that that balance doesn't get upset in here. You know, it's, the ocean's, you know, the ocean is not the most hospitable place to humans, but it is part of that whole global system that keeps us alive. I think the, uh, actually, I think that it has been incredibly hospitable to humans. Um, it's such an important resource, even the deep sea, you know, some yeah. of the, some of the, the the organisms that we survive on, you know, the, the coastal areas fish. are definitely more hospitable. But yeah, I was thinking just out um, here, you're just so exposed as a human. No, but even out here, there there are important aspects of the deep sea and, and the seafloors that are important to life. Um, there's there's communities. Oh of, yeah, totally. You know, it's it's um, one of, one of the important one something that I think is really important is connecting people to the seafloor. Because even though it is so distant, um, it's actually a really, it's really important and it's part of entire large scale ecosystem processes in the ocean, which um, help to feed, you know, the, the coastal organisms and, and people on all coasts and throughout the world. There's a reason that um, these areas have been fished historically, you know? Yep. Um, there are, there are, there's, ex there's, um, you know, they have been exploited. There's. But there are natural resources here that, um, you know, include, um, you know, uh, I mean, whales utilize these spaces, you know, um, they can find, there are monk seals that can dive, dive mm -hmm. deep and utilize the resources in these spaces and, and look at us, you know, we're exploring the sea floor. That's a, that's actually a, you know, it's its own unique use of understanding the beauty and, um, you know, the intrinsic value of these spaces, and then also, you know, the value of inspiring art and poems, and, um, yeah. you know, it's it's so important to have this sort of connection with, with the yeah, deep totally. sea. Yeah, um, totally. Um, and so, and, and uh, to go back to that, that point, um, I think, you know, while the tragedy of the commons is, is, um, is kind of a, it's an in, it's an interesting uh, component because I recently learned that the tragedy of the commons um, uh, is is was due to some uh, mismanagement of the commons uh, within the system that was that was that they were part of uh, the systems had changed and so when someone went back and looked at that that period of time they saw only after they had. Uh, um, 
remove some of the, the structure that, that kept the commons um, as a as a community resource and um, it used to be that the commons were available to anyone uh, with a certain you know but anyways um, and so while I while I do believe that um, the tragedy of the commons is is not something that is inherently a human disposition I do believe that there is you know a, a real capitalist gain to um, extracting exploiting and um, you know, leaving litter in, in the deep sea and, and all yeah. throughout, you know, and so well, these protected spaces is, it's important to have these protected spaces. And that is one of the problems with, yeah. you know, the whole, that, that capitalist notion is that um, it's it's actually a fairly short term outlook in that, um, you know, that it's, it's driven around growth always and profit. And if you're always trying to push a system to, or you know, a company, whatever, uh, uh, a resource, for, if you're always trying to push in the direction of growth rather than sustainability, um, you, you know, that that's just not uh, something that can uh, happen forever. So um, within that kind of mindset, you, if you're after, say, a resource, you're gonna you're gonna constantly try to keep producing more and more of that resource year over year in order to keep everybody happy. Mm -hmm. um, whether or not that's actually necessary is another conversation. But um, with it in in the under the pressure of constant growth, you do eventually run out of that resource. You exploit it. You over you know you um, I think you, you over procure it, and uh, eventually uh, your source collapses, and then there's nothing more. And that's that's just an that inherently periodically on unstable sort of uh, sort of uh, system. You know? Yeah, I think when you're doing it in a capitalist individual look at something, but I think there well, are ways. Well, it's a short-term profit over long-term stability. Right. Yeah. When you're. Yeah. 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 It's a great question, Mahina, and and thank you, Val and Virginia. To me, it's so simple. Yeah, this is this is vital part of our home. And uh, what else do you do to your home besides care for it, protect it, love yeah. it? And uh, you know, it's it's the largest it's the largest part of the largest ecosystem on Earth. Yeah, you know, this is where life began. It's uh, it's just something to cherish. And um, I don't I don't uh, know that we'll be a ever be able to make dollars and cents out of it. I don't know that we'll ever be able to um, come to political agreements about the value of this place. We try. We can try drawing lines around certain parts of the ocean and uh, and others. But the reality is, um, I don't actually make a distinction I, I, between places that we should protect and places that we shouldn't, places where people belong and places where people don't. This is um, this is a living a living planet that we belong to. We belong yeah. to it, and uh, and so it's part of our responsibility to care for that. It's the same as almost like why would we care for our own bodies? Why would we care for our own selves? And that's even even that is something that we as humans have begun to forgot <laughs> we see the we see the level of disease and sickness and and unwellness um, that surrounds us globally even while our healthcare advances medical advances are supposedly accelerating um, so I think it's uh, it's as simple as that to me we take care of ourselves take care of our homes care of yeah, our families and, you know these these are efforts that we have to do collectively mm -hmm. you know one person can't save the world, but maybe with enough of us, you know, we could we could do some good. Yeah, absolutely. One person can make a difference, though. That's important. Yeah. Oh, very much so. I'm just saying it doesn't it it shouldn't be all heaped on one person. But absolutely, oh, yeah, you're absolutely. right that. Sorry, I was um, just trying to add yeah. on, not, uh, not negate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry about to, that. Yeah. No, you're. But good. yeah, no, you, you raise a good point that. Um, the right person with the right voice, the right platform, the right soapbox can absolutely help bring those kinds of people together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say it almost always fundamentally depends on at least two. It's uh, back to the conversation we were sharing earlier in some ways, it's it's the relationship that, that really is important. And um, mm -hmm. one person can rally as much as they want and uh, take as many actions as they want, but until it, it comes into relationship with our place with our with other people and also our more than human friends 
and family. Um, you know, and we don't really see the impact until the impact lives in that space between us. Yeah, that's what the outreach we're doing is hopefully what what that will hopefully achieve. You know, we can bring this back to Hawaii, bring this back to our homes, wherever that it might be. And try to teach people about this place and bring people here with us. Yeah. In virtual reality. Coming to you on the IMAX. To a screen near you. <laughs> For only forty-two dollars. I mean, you know, I'm really glad you asked that question. It's it, there's so much beneath that, and it, it makes it incredibly hard to articulate uh, a I think, response. I think yeah. Dan did a great job. Yeah. 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 It's definitely a loaded question, and I'm definitely curious if anyone else has their mana'o thoughts. And I don't mean uh, particularly for Papahanaumokuakea Hanamukuakea Marine National Monument, because we're in it, and our expedition our expedition is around this um, space. But if, I mean, like, these spaces in general, uh, these environments mm. in general, why should they be? And, I mean, what is... I guess, what is your own connection to environment? Why you feel like they need to be protected, especially now when we feel like our, or it seems like our political climate is just growing more and more polarized. Um, and I think it's hard to find that middle ground where we can communicate and have a healthy exchange and engage with one another and agree to disagree sometimes or learn from one another. It just is worrisome. But I do have a lot of hope, so just curious to see what other thoughts are. Yeah, definitely. Mahina Lani, gently reflecting the light of the sun, deep knowledge on all of us. I appreciate <laughs> you, Mahina. And I think it's critical to have these conversations with these loaded questions, to be able to as you said, communicate with one another and to be able to understand where where we all come from. And like, um, I think it was um, echoed in a lot of the mana on the thoughts that were, that were shared. This is, this is our home, this is where we come from. This is where, this is what we rely on, like this is what sustains us. And it's so important to be able to connect with one another um, since this, these resources are what connects us intrinsically all across the world. And so I just wanted to mahalo you, Mahina, for bringing up this conversation and for bringing up such an important question that I think is really important to, to keep asking ourselves and keep conversing with each other um, for, for a long time. I do wonder, Mahina, your, your question uh, makes me wonder, and I've been thinking about you know how do we how do we communicate how do we build relationship with places with home how do we craft uh, an environment a community a scenario where our young children where all of us really as as families as communities can um, evolve to see ourselves as so integral as such a part of this really beautiful whole um, especially places that are so far away like the deep sea and so for me, um, exploring in these, in these spaces, um, identifying them as sacred parts of our home, as important parts of, our, of this planet that we all share, I think it's, uh, it is really critical. Um, and, it ha and, and that does have to be a collective effort. There are, of course, individual actions that all contribute to that. But, um, but the control van is, uh, and, the, and the many people tuning in online and, and uh, experts joining from ashore, um, this this whole ocean exploration community, um, I think, is a window into a part of our home that we didn't realize we even had. Yeah. And, uh, and, and I think that's really really important that we that we open that window and um, allow people to uh, to ask questions about it. Like you said, I love. We're not always going to agree. We, we nobody ever agrees. Should we hang the painting there? Should we hang it there? Should we put <laughs> the couch there? Should we put it over there? We're always uh, in argument and in discussion about uh, exactly how we think things should be in in, in our home, um, and that's okay. Science is a part of that process. Art is a part of that process. We we uh, we just work together to to figure it out. Listen to one another, even when we disagree. 
And you know, we've, we've, we're have we in the middle of this technological revolution that's been drastically changing how humans communicate in fundamental ways over the last 20 and some odd years. And uh, you know, we, we can use that to bring this to people who cannot make it out to sea with us. And uh, you know, we, we can bring this to so many more people than we ever could have imagined. And you know, um, for me at least, education, is what brings me closer to this, you know, striving to understand what I'm looking at, like, you know, finding the resources, teaching myself, you know, getting a degree in this stuff, um, sometimes more than one. And yeah, I, you, you start to really understand things more. You start to under, understand what you're seeing, what you're looking at. You start to understand what you don't understand. And I think that's, that's an important part of that connection with spaces like these too. There's always something more that you could learn. Yeah, space of learning. I like that a lot, though. Front row, I love you guys. You guys are doing a great job taking us along this ridge. But any thoughts on uh, why why protect why protect these places other than to just let uh, Robert keep cruising around, joy <laughs> joy riding through them and all kinds of different craft and sampling lava. Yeah, sampling oh lava and. All kinds of other amazing things, but what what makes what makes you all feel like uh, it's we should protect protect these spaces? Um, I mean, I feel like when you're realistic about like the um, human impact on the world, there's so many people within like the scientific community that understand the value of these places, but there's also like just as many if not more people that just don't understand that value so it kind of is like you know it's our responsibility to um kind of serve as protectors of these places mm. um mm -hmm. because yeah i don't know it's just like the reality of it as much as we want to fight it and as angry as it might make us like we just yeah have to face that it's really beautiful, and I love this. I love this notion of protector. It's a powerful concept in Olelo Hawaii and Hawaiian culture, the kiai, um, the guardians of our spaces. And whether it's the mauna or it's the ocean, uh, we have um, we have uh, kiai. And in fact, a program I'm privileged enough to help facilitate at Purple Maya Foundation is kiai kai. Yeah. It's our ocean protectors and stewards, and uh, we do need guardians of spaces that. You know, we, we often talk about it in Hawaii, where we welcome so many millions of tourists every year to come and visit the islands, and we understand the importance that they they realize how this beautiful place in the middle of the Pacific is part of their their planet home um, that they can feel connected to, but that also it's not just a place to, you don't just walk into someone else's uh, bedroom and just <laughs> yeah, do whatever right. you want. You come in and uh, and share aloha and respect. You enter with permission. You enter with invitations, and um, and then it's a beautiful party. Awesome yeah, things I can mean, happen. It's it's stewardship. It's uh, you know it's an honorable duty. You know I, I grew up kind of being steward of a uh, small amount of land uh, up near uh, uh, you know up near Lake Superior, and uh, you know that kind of gets instilled in you. And uh, yeah, you you do feel very protective of that land. And you want to make sure that it's kept natural and. Uh, you know, what it's supposed to be. Mm. Same with this. So do we want to do a Niskin before we let, left the bottom in uh, about five minutes? Oh my goodness, um, we're leaving the bottom. We'd either or do, do it, uh, rock? no, I, I, think, I think we're good for rocks. Um, we're still right about at the same uh, depth as the last one, so, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, we could either take a Niskin right before we get off bottom or right after. Oh, that's, that's pretty soon. Whatever so. works. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> like, we're we're about uh, six like, minutes out. So let's. Yeah. Whoa, what's that huge fish? Is that a fish? What is that? Uh, Look at the where? Atalanta view. What's hiding uh -oh. behind her? Oh. oh. Oh, is that? Is that an octopus? Is that a Dumbo? It might be another. Oh, we love you, yeah. Dumbo. Came back to say goodbye. <laughs> oh, it is might be. Is it a mermaid? Be. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, Internet. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy. I don't even think I'm supposed to say that, actually. <laughs> oh, Chimera, I think? Yeah. Oh, yeah. big one. That's very large. Super cool. 
Yeah, all the rocks are looking kind of all manganese here, so. Manganese. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll let them be. Manganese. This sounds like a rap song. We gotta <laughs> we have to write that one. So are we doing a Niskin? Yeah, let's yeah, do a Niskin before we go. Yeah. Uh, this will be a background one. Yeah, and then we will be on our way, recovering around midnight. So, yeah, this is a lot of stuff happening in four minutes. So, yep. <laughs> and uh, then we can all process some samples, go to bed, and uh, flip the saw on in the morning, which I'm sure everybody will appreciate, <laughs> especially if they're trying to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Sorry in advance. And if anyone really feels like partying, we'll be uh, hanging out with the a whole school full, yep, whole, so a whole middle school full of kids from Connecticut. Oh, uh, cool! From two to two to four this morning. So oh my gosh! Uh, be in the studio having a little karaoke party, singing ocean songs to uh, our middle school friends. Oh. Um, number four, if Ken. Uh, okay. uh, collecting one more water sample for eDNA analysis before Hercules and Atalanta. Start via their, their marvelous journey back pilots to us. and navigator start coming home. Yeah. Return from the depths. Yeah, we still got a little bit of blue water to do. Oh boy. <laughs> oh, I did forget about that somehow. Yeah, like, like, just How like, could you? I don't know. I was just we like, do oh, so great. much I'll get to go to sleep early. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Which is fine. I love this. Yep. But I, yeah. Yeah, I think we have a couple of bio samples, don't we? Um, yeah, we have a bamboo um, and a crassigorgia. Yeah, we have two, Ooh. and then the, the eDNA samples as well. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, so we have a little bit of work to do tonight in the wet lab. Oh, are you helping with the biology samples? Uh, I have rocks to process. I know you do, <laughs> but the way you said it. <laughs> uh, do you trust me handling biology samples when I'm not trained for it? <laughs> I, yeah, I train people all the time. Get you trained up. Get you trained up, Val. Oh, we lost one of them. Yeah, that was last uh, shift. What happened? I think Looks one like of the balls went missing. Number five. five is off. Five got lost. How yeah. Lose number five. <laughs> oh, it just, it's in the log book. It says, number five is off. <laughs> I was like, what? Well, they shouldn't even have been pulling number five. It was already pulled. Well, we're going to make bigger ones. <laughs> we don't have any any uh, filament left. No colored filament. Well, this is annoying. Yeah, we need bigger ones. <laughs> we need to make bigger ones. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys, enough of your arcade games up there. Let's go. <laughs> Let's get this EDNA. Watch it? Yeah, I'm watching. Did it go? No. Can't tell. No, it didn't. Well, I can't see. I don't want to keep pulling no, it. No, don't pull it. We'll lose, no. we'll lose the little one. It didn't go, actually. I'm actually watching it the whole time. It didn't go? Nope. Did not. You want to do three? Can do. How are... How can you even see the Niskins at this point? I can make them out, but it just nothing move at all. Go? No. Mm. Nope. Mm. Did we pull the camera back? It seems like this is not it. That's it. Looks like it's a little bit more. Nope. That is it. <laughs> there we go. There oh, we go. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you see four still open. You pulled on a few times, and I can still see it. Nice. Yeah. Awesome work. Yeah, all right. Thank five. you. Doesn't look like it closed all the way either. Just keeping it out. Great. Niskin bottles misbehaving a little bit. 
to give them a talking to when they get back up well, to the I sewers. do that sometimes. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, man, I have a Niskin <laughs> ROV story. Oh, no. It's bad. So sometimes they get rigged wrong, too. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, my. All right, folks. That's it for this dive. Yeah. So yes. we're ready so to go. We need to get straight down here. So we need to. People already getting excited for blue water online. Want to see those oceanic white tips, those squid? Yeah, they might have to wait about, what do you think, an hour before we see the yeah. white tips and squid? So yeah, that would something be like that. I mean, for right now, we just have that enormous sea cucumber. Yeah, yeah. They'll be at the surface. So the, um, <laughs> actually, I'll wait to tell the story until they're... Yeah, yeah. I do want to hear it. Me too. Do it. You got a long night, man. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> mm hmm. Yep. We're going to let our SCF get a little coffee break. So, you got to put up with the rest of us. <laughs> it's the front row in a spot where they can hear a. Yeah. A Niskin RV story? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this was a couple of years ago. We uh, we were, it was the first deployment of uh, the ROV for the trip. They had placed the Niskins actually underneath the, uh, like the ROV, like, uh, so uh, basically like behind the porch basket okay. um, that would co come in and out. And, uh, you know, they had a whole setup. It was all rigged. And, um, just drive out. Sorry. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Virginia. I'm listening. Okay, just Pearl. cable out, and then, uh, then we'll cover up. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So we were. Um, so you're on the opposite heading of this ship. No. Yeah. or something. Yeah, right in there and just hit the uh, stick lock. Sorry, Virginia. I no, you're totally good. Okay. You're y'all good? Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, so we had we had just deployed. We were I, I forget how deep we were we were at this point, but we had we'd been descending for a little while, um, and all of a sudden we see this white. Uh, we see a whole bunch of bubbles and like white, f like what like on a, like little spongy th bits coming up in front of us, and everyone starts panicking is the wrong word but <laughs> there were there was some definite like what is that what's happening and some of the uh there is a uh, some of the equipment started giving back weird readings 
Um, and and then there, um, they saw little bits of sort of like um, the white. They thought it was maybe foam, like some of their, the foam of the ROV, actually. Oh. Yes, it was very problematic. So we get back on board, and uh, we find out that three of the four Niskins had exploded. Oh. What? Actually, I apologize, imploded. Yeah. They had imploded. <laughs> they had triggered on the descent at some point, or um, <gasps> potentially on impact with the... Hmm. with the um as the rov got deployed and so the niskins had closed, they closed with and air. so they closed with water or air at a lower pressure hmm. then um as we descended they actually imploded um it's actually one of the reasons why you always move through the water um you always move down in the water with open niskins and then yeah. you move up with closed niskins um and so, yeah, they had these, they had had at least one Niskin that had imploded and then two others that had broken adjacent to it. Dude. And it actually oh messed gosh. up some of the, um, some of, yeah, some of, some of the equipment on the bottom had been, had been disturbed as well as some of the, like, um, housing. It was <laughs> unbelievable. Ooh. Absolutely unbelievable. So that's called sympathetic implosion. So oh, yeah. So you have something implode that's close to another implodable volume it can cause it to implode because you you uh you know normally you would have pressure even on all sides right mm -hmm. and when you have an implosion that makes an imbalance so that you have a lower pressure zone oh wow you know for a, a fraction of a second mm -hmm. and that causes uh, the yeah, other thing to implode mm -hmm. so you can get a chain reaction and huh. that's what happened to uh was it Nereus? Oh, uh, yeah. It had a bunch of uh, ceramic spheres that were used for flotation. That was sort of a novel idea, but when one went, it took out all the others. And the whole thing went. Oh, my gosh. So we used to use glass spheres for flotation. Mm -hmm. And those things would sometimes do that. You would, yeah. We have a pack of like six of those things, and one of them would implode and take out all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. I mean, yeah, shockwaves. Uh, yeah. So yeah. that's a, a big deal mm -hmm. in the, on Alvin is that they make sure that they don't have implodable volumes, you know, too close to each other. Uh, that's crazy. Yeah, it, it's absolutely wild. I mean, and this thing, it was just shattered. Yeah, yeah. when they, mm -hmm. when they uh, go off, they can go off really yeah. <laughs> like a grenade. Yeah, yeah. I um, believe it, man. That's, I, yeah. that is wild. Yeah, I had never seen anything like that before. Hopefully you never see it again. <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. I know someone who was on a research cruise like a couple months ago and they got video from the deck. A big CTD rosette, like one of the bigger yeah. ones, mm -hmm. was coming up and some something happened with the winch. The winch didn't stop and it went all the way up <gasps> and hit it and then just broke off. Oh my no. no! So that's happened quite a few times. So oh. actually on that same, the, when we were collecting the lava, oh on my that gosh. very same cruise there was a brand new CTD rosette. Oh no! Oof. On the first launch of that thing, it was like a half million dollar fancy <laughs> CTD rosette. <laughs> and they two blocked it and lost the thing. And like it was a really like treacherous terrain. And we spent jeez. a week looking for it. Oh Oof. my gosh. Never found it. Wow. Oh, jeez. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I was, in, I was in that part of the Lao Basin in 2017, and I can confirm we did not find a CTD rosette on the seafloor. <laughs> <laughs> was that was that Bill Chadwick? Is that right? Uh, yeah, he was one of the one of the co-leads. Yeah. He earned the nickname Chill Bill on that cruise. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> was he actually chill or the opposite? <laughs> Pretty chill. Really nice guy. You can give it more juice. Dial it up to, no, just oh. just dial up to Z bias. You can just crank it until it says 100%. 
they didn't even come up very fast. And I think they were planning on this coming up pretty quick. And oh, probably yeah. not going to be as quick as thought. Maybe. We're currently 69 minutes in service. Do you want winch cam up? Uh, do you want winch cam? Amber's asking. Yeah, we can, we can do that. Man, we started talking about food way too early because I am hungry. <laughs> Watch our speed on the. Yeah. In case it does it again. Yeah. <laughs> ah, Where winch feed. There All it right. Is. We got the winch cam on. Good, good. Oh. If you're just joining us, welcome to the winch watch. Yes. We are currently uh, ascending from the seafloor uh, mm -hmm. after really cool 24 hour, uh, well actually a little less than 24 hour dive, about a 20 hour dive on uh, Willard Seamount. Uh, we are uh, up uh, in the, somewhere within the uh, north, uh, Northwest Hawaiian Ridge and I am busy tripping over my words, so I'm gonna stop talking. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, we've had a very successful dive here. We've collected several rocks, a couple of different um, coral specimens, uh, also those eDNA specimens that I was talking about earlier. We've seen some very interesting morphology, I think. and uh, Including something that was not an urchin and not an anemone, but actually a coral with a really giant polyp. Yes, yes. In uh, sand. Yes, in sand. Which, which broke my brain. <laughs> <laughs> so... Yeah, it's been very interesting, very interesting. Um, and this was a, a very different um, seamount route that we took. We've been focusing on ridges usually, and while we, we did do some work on the ridges, we actually focused a lot more on some of the sedimented areas along the sort of canyon-looking uh, region here. And there's been uh, several saddles between high points on the, on the, on the summit as well, so that was it's very interesting. We saw, I think, some pillow basalts and uh, sheep flows and... Some low bait low flows. Low bait flows. Lots of rubble. Oh, I heard people saw some pumice earlier, which is always interesting, those travelers. Yep. Yeah, Moving I think so we saw far. that, well, uh, a little bit before our watch when we were hanging yeah, out in the lounge. Yeah. Oh, and of course, we can't forget the Dumbo. Yes. We we have, we have now seen a Dumbo on our watch. I think it's, you know, successful trip. We saw it. We saw it run into a bamboo. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we did. <laughs> it was kind of adorable. Yes, I I think those those uh, those cephalopods are just so amazing, so brilliant, so interesting. We um, we need to make Megan uh, cut that into a YouTube clip. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is already. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's. So wonderful to see there. I definitely uh, got that one. Mm -hmm. I didn't catch many highlights today, but I got that one. Yeah. The Dumbo. No, that's that's a, the a Dumbo definite crash. highlight. It's yeah. going to go into my new gallery on the website coming up called uh, Deep Sea Crime Scenes. Deep <laughs> Sea and, uh, Crime Scenes. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you'll have a couple Dumbo octopus ones in that one, I believe. For sure. That one that was like, looked like the, the Godfather Dumbo octopus they saw yeah. on the other watch the other day. Oh, oh yeah. Definitely sketchy. Mm -hmm. I, I think kidding. I get the highlight clips. Yeah. Oh, I will have that video for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> we all do get those highlight cuts, so we try the communication fellows, all three of us try to do a good job of yeah. getting those highlights cut. And of course we love the still camera images we've been getting and yeah, all the amazing data we'll get to take home from this expedition. Looking forward to it. Yeah, one of the, uh, something that a lot of people don't see is all the work that the science communication fellows are doing and the, all the, the interns on board as well. There's, there's so much work, so many ship to shores, so much 
There's all the Instagram posts, there's, you know, the highlights, there's, uh, you know, and then there's the people, you know, we haven't met who are offshore, who are doing so much work on, on some of the past dives as well, especially, um, I know that there's been a lot of work uh, on the shipwrecks. Um, so much work has gone into those and the, you know, the, the highlight real in the, the YouTube videos and, and yeah and if, if you haven't yet uh, check out some of the highlights from uh, the uh, 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 from the dives that we did on the World War two carriers uh, right. up on YouTube yeah there's the Yorktown Kaga and Akagi that we have the privilege um, to to video and I think that is up on YouTube yep mm -hmm. yeah it's, uh, Along with a number of our other uh, highlights from our uh, uh, biology and geology dives. Much lighter yeah. highlights. Yes. yes. Like the, the coral forests. Um, yeah. Which uh, features the a wonderful uh, uh, Mahina and Dan talking over it. Oh. It's, it's a beautiful oh. video. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Anytime I get to chat with Mahina, it should be a highlight. Yeah. Put, it, put, it in my, put it in my reels. <laughs> I don't even know what reels are, but you yeah. should put them there. I think that's Instagram, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, and speaking of Instagram, definitely um, follow along on the journey on all the social channels, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, you know, like and share um, all this amazing content. It goes right back to just... Helping, feel pe yeah, helping people feel connected to this beautiful place. And um, you all definitely help me feel so connected. But social media we can use for a force for good. I'm sure of it. I'll, I'll figure it out one of these days. But uh, yeah, absolutely. Check us out on YouTube, all the socials. Not all this live. Dot org, right? Dot org. <laughs> we we might need our own org. sub page, 8 to 12 watch. <laughs> Little secret web page for the greatest watch of all time. That's right. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> Alleged. I don't know. I was, yeah, was self-proclaimed by it, one member. I was, I was kind of on the struggle bus with some of the IDs today. <laughs> um, I believe it was the biology IDs, which you're a geologist. <laughs> I don't know if you know this about yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but you study rocks. <laughs> We're working in Do the I? space between. Yeah. We're working in the spaces between. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm working hard to try to get some of these right. I'm, uh, I could probably study a little more though, but. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I think you're doing great. No, the the, the 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 coral in the sand was what really got me. That that's what's just broken my brain this uh, evening, and yes. I I, I yes. love it when I run into things that do that to my brain. Mm. It is always fun to see something that you're it makes you question, like what what is this? How yep. does this come to be? Yep, that happens with mantle research every now and again, and it's it, it I love it. It's like you you just like it's just thrown in your face again that yeah we know nothing. You know, and we're trying, and yeah, we know this, so much. There's a, yet so there's a whole world out there. Science. Yeah. Yes. So all anyone listening, science. go into science. There's there's a question out there for you. You just find it and follow it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, answer some of these. To be a science. Answer a some of these questions okay. that are breaking our brains. Yeah, yeah like Manny, should they be on chicken? Should they yes. be oh on chicken? God. Yes. Zach is in here. Cool, cool. <laughs> Let's go to Hilo, everybody. Kukui is going to take us around. Yeah. Yes, ah. Uh. I, I would love to see some artists, too, be inspired by all of this because, mm. you know, as I keep saying, science is nothing without a little soul. Yeah. I was uh, watching so. Kara downstairs while the coffee was brewing. I, I, I escaped the control van to get a little coffee since I'm going to be up late through the night doing ship to shores, and Kara's uh, there sketching sketching oh, the Dumbo the octopus. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, that's so important. Also enjoyed Nautilus watching. Uh, favorite. Watching. Uh, uh, maybe it'll be a surprise. Maybe I shouldn't say anything. Catalina, <laughs> am, I, am I allowed to talk about the expedition badges that you? Oh, amazing. Catalina is uh, also an artist and designer, doing uh, some graphic design. Creates really cool oh, stickers and and awesome. sticker designs for Great. expeditions. And um, she's been working on one for this expedition. I'm excited to see how it turns out. Oh, that's awesome! Fantastic. Yeah, really, really cool. So yeah, you could be a scientist and an artist too. That's it. That's it. But yeah. Yeah, you don't just have to pick one. Yeah, whatever, whatever you end up doing, 
Yeah, there's we uh we are an There's ocean. space for you in science. And we can be it all. Space yeah. for you on some of these research ships, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not much space. If you're my size, you got <laughs> you want to double. Yeah. yeah. You want to think about it twice. I okay, I stand corrected. He does, yeah. I think you're going to get in a bit of a shoulder hunch standing up. Oh, uh, yeah. Killing me. Killing me. Come on, yeah. guys. You can't actually stand up in the mess, can you? No. No. Yeah. <laughs> Anywhere on the ship. It's a nightmare. Not even in the bunk? The like in your room? Well, deck. okay, the bunk itself the is like, deck, I, oh, I can't oh, even man. sit up in my bunk room. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why we have the outside yeah. decks. Yeah, they're goodness. a wonderful place to be. Yeah. It's my, yes. own, my own fault. It is, it is a real benefit on my home planet. to be small. <laughs> it is. <laughs> a lot of people Ships say, I wish I could be your size. height. No, you don't. No, you don't. Yeah, you know when, you, when you're my size or smaller and uh, you're an isotope geochemist, you're the one who ends up inside the mass spec doing the tricky repairs <laughs> because you're the only person who can reach the, uh, re reach the oil get, pump sometimes. You know, like, honey, I shrunk the kids. I'm imagining <laughs> Val like, getting shot through a mass spectrometer and, like, yes. and split into all of her different uh, isotopes. But know, like Miss Frizzle ones. style, you've got like a school bus that you're going <laughs> That's through. That's right. Oh, magic yeah. school bus. I miss uh -huh. it. I miss it. I buy it. I don't know, this is basically like the magic school bus, except it, it can't be on land. <laughs> we're, just always, we're just always on the water. We are joined again today by the smiley face on the back deck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it does make my day. Although it looks like it's a, uh, um, it's a little squiggly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's been dubbed the deck, the deck frog by the internet, and it does look the extra deck froggy frog? today. Frog. The, the deck, deck frog. frog. Yeah. <laughs> mm, it the does look frog. a tiny bit froggy. I can see that's We can see the cranes from. or its legs. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Mahina is saving our lives. <gasps> oh, anybody want crackers? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you, Mahina. Oh, none for me. Thank Thanks you, so. Mahina. Are those that I'm you. good? I just had like six of them. Thank you, though. Go for, yeah. go for it. Yeah, go for it. Awesome. Thank you, Mahina. Thank you, yes. Thank you, Mahina. Someone who knows us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was whining about being hungry earlier because we started talking about food at the start of uh, watch instead of toward the end. Mm -hmm. You got me thinking about ranch dressing. Ranch? <laughs> hey, it's like its own food group. I swear. I'm appalled that there's no I, ranch I grew on up vessel. in the Midwest. What could I say? I, uh, I mean, yeah. We'll I'm surprised I've, got, I've lasted this long without ranch. I mean, it's been like three weeks. You know, I've lived out of Michigan long enough that I don't actually like keep it around that often. It's oh like my every God, now and again, it. it's just like, I need ranch. I, and I, then that's I get like a Costco I, container. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or you can get mayonnaise. <laughs> or it could give me. You are well, absolutely correct. How, how long have you lived out of the Midwest? <laughs> like eight years. Okay, I've been out of it a little longer, so I don't know. Maybe I'm I mean, on I guess I, I guess I kind of <laughs> left uh, when I was 18. Uh, but I've been back and forth, but, uh, um, Oh yeah, I'm still yeah. back and forth all the time too. So that would be, I don't know what that math is. 15 years? Okay. Uh, yeah, we might be on the same timeline yeah. thereabouts. Cause mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, I moved out of Michigan at 22 to start grad school. Uh, mm -hmm. but that was just mm -hmm. down to Illinois. So that's still the Midwest. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Wait, where'd you uh, do your grad school in Illinois? Uh, University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. Oh, no way. Oh, fun. Do you have fun, a tie fun. there? Uh, I used to. I used to. My partner used to. Um, uh, 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 she worked on a, a farm that was in Urbana. Ah, okay. Well, yeah, there was a there was a, a farm there that uh, had a lot of volunteers, and it oh. was a uh, um, non for profit. Yeah, I used to go. I used to go biking around all the farms around campus, mm -hmm. like all the time in the summers. Yeah, yeah. Great no, place. It's, great place for road biking. It's beautiful. It's beautiful down there. Yeah. yeah. That's so funny. Huh. Oh, didn't Small know that. world. Yeah. <laughs> It's smaller every day. <laughs> yeah, I was there for about two and two years, and then uh, at 24, I moved down to uh, El Paso to start a PhD. Nice, so. nice. 
Yeah, and I've uh, just kind of been, yeah, El Paso, Hawaii, Maryland, trips to Michigan in the middle of it all. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Midwest to the Mid-Pacific. Yep. Glad you guys made it far from home yeah. to adventure with yeah, us. The yeah. Right below it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's funny. I didn't know you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, it, it, oh. I don't know. That was it yep, was a part yep, of my yep, life yep. for a while, so. and not so much anymore. And yeah, I had a good time there, but um, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it was it was time to leave. Yeah. Uh, Valid. When when that time came around, so. Absolutely. That is the thing about like you know grad school going into academia. You kind of end up being a little bit of a nomad, mm -hmm. but still you get those cravings for ranch dressing, and uh, then you got to go out and get them. And a bottle you got to go find yourself and some, you go, and you yeah. go put it on everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's important. A little bit of ranch it's dressing important. with some pizza. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I do get that with uh, with pizza pretty regularly. I'm just trying to get. Mm -hmm. And then people look at you like you're crazy, and you're like, no, no, you're like, no, this you is should delicious. try this. You yeah, try this. You know, it's it's yeah. like uh, that time when uh, oh, I was a kid, and one of my cousins was like, oh, we're doing pancakes. You need to try this. You need to try it with peanut butter. And I was so skeptical, and I tried it, and you put peanut butter on the pancake, put a little maple syrup on yeah, top. Yeah, absolutely. Oh people god. don't do that. People, uh, it's delicious. That. Oh my god, yeah. it's addictive. <laughs> And like, yeah, I, I can't do gluten or anything now. And I may, I, I'll, I'll do like uh, buckwheat pancakes or something oh, and just yeah. put the peanut butter on. Oh, buckwheat so pancakes good. are so good. They're so good. Mm -hmm. I haven't done buckwheat pancakes in a while. Uh, I've yeah. done pancakes You're in a while. You're definitely adding yeah. the maple syrup on top of it. Yes, yeah. maple <laughs> syrup and peanut butter is just this, this magical really combination. <laughs> like, it's got to be real maple syrup, like Michigan maple syrup. Oh. <laughs> I'm an elitist in that, in that way. Because <laughs> <No. laughs> I know there's Canada, Canadian. I know. Vermont, I was like, syrup. oh, you didn't even do and the Northeast. And they're good, but I, I got I to gotta, I gotta, I gotta stick to my roots. Michigan maple syrup. We all just right. lost all of our Canadian viewers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Apologize. Apologize to all of our Cana Canadian friends. Because if you say roots, uh, truly with a Michigan accent, it comes out more like roots. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. true. Yeah, that's, oh, that's, uh, that's how you tell a Michigander. Fun, fun fact, the term Canucks, which is described oh, now yeah. these days most Canadians, uh, maybe all, um, actually derived from the word Kanaka. Yeah, the, really? Hawaii, the Hawaiian word. It was um, Hawaiian sailors going to work in the whaling industry on the eastern seaboard uh, up in uh, Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, wow. the northeastern part of the United States. Um, some of the best, some of the best men on those whaling ships, and uh, them along with uh, other people who had s similar complexions, um, just became referred to as Canucks. No the way. Canucks, short for Canucks, and it was because they were they were the best ones to have out on board the ship. So now all Canadians aspiring to be Hawaiian, it's a little bit silly, but uh, we love you guys. It's a good, cool little, cool little language, a little bit of history. I think it's true, you know. Canada gave us poutine. They gave Canada us poutine. Did give us poutine. <laughs> Are we thankful for that? Yes, no. not our cholesterol. They can have their, they can have their poutine back. Send if you it don't do it all the time, that your cholesterol will be happy. <laughs> well, I don't know. Poutine is wonderful. Gravy is good on everything, but the yes, cheese curds are, seem a bit unnecessary. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? What's wrong with cheese Wait, curds? Wait, what? <laughs> sorry, Midwesterners. <laughs> we lost all our Midwestern viewers as well. <laughs> Out the door. I just get up and leave. <laughs> Virginia leaves the van. Oh, okay, man. blue water's over. Did Everybody go home. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you hear everyone throw their headset down and walk up. Okay, you, have you ever had like a truly fresh like Wisconsin cheese curd that squeaks when you eat it? I have, Squeaks. yeah. Yes. Squeaky yes, cheese curds. Actually. Fresh cheese curds squeak when you eat them. Kukui, run. Run now, Kukui. No, you don't no, want to know. Run. Come to the dark side. No. You don't want to know, Kukui. No, they do strange agree, things up there in the Midwest. Cheese curds are delicious. Yeah. Oh, I would. Okay, see? Virginia yeah. would, Zach. Virginia would eat mayonnaise with chicken. Only if you will then <laughs> eat the cheese curds. <laughs> okay, okay, fine. <laughs> I thought this was an exchange. <laughs> Cultural exchange. <laughs> cheese curds and mayo chicken. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think you're getting the better end of the deal. Cheese so curds I'm, are I'm phenomenal. Fried I'm cheese curds are just, Ooh. I mean, there's, yeah, no, it's yeah, good. It's interesting. Oh. Interesting. It's good. I, I miss good fried food. That's one thing, like, when, when you have to make those kinds of diet changes, like, just, yeah, like, my body just yeah. does not do gluten. 
Like that means you don't get to do some of the fried food unless you find like, you know, somebody who'll do like a separate a preparation separate, with like yeah. the gluten-free panko and everything. And it's just like, oh, I love fried food. I eat a lot healthier because of this thing, but um, yeah. yeah. Sometimes you just want like good fried chicken or fried cheese curds or- Fried pickles. Oh, I haven't had fried pickles, pickles but that would be yes. amazing. I've had fried, fried zucchini. If you go hang fried out with Zach in Texas, you can get uh, fried butter, you can get fried yeah. Oreo. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 Yeah, you can get fried <laughs> coke. Wait, so let me tell hang you on, Zach's so coming in. As a, as a Texan, let me tell you, so there is a place <laughs> down from where uh, I grew up in. It's called Old Town Spring, and it's, it's, a, it's a literal like uh, refurbished western town. Like it was, it was a railroad town. So in this little Old Town Spring Place, they have what's called the Loose Caboose. The Loose Caboose <laughs> has everything fried. They have fried Twinkies, fried yes. Ding Dongs, fried yes. Ice oh Cream, God. fried yes. Pickles, fried, um, and uh, they have corn dogs, of course, so they have fries, of course. They um, do fried Coke? Oh, yeah. That'd be interesting. That was but a Texas State thing. Fair thing. <laughs> fried what? Coke? Fried fried Coke. Yeah, like the soda. How, How do you, do you fry? Do that? I have been it, wondering this for years. It's a Texas State Fair thing where they have like a new fried yeah, food every yeah. year. Yeah. And that was one of theirs How, one yeah, year. Actually, you know so what? we I'm need to go look this, this up. All right. <laughs> Nautilus is go, they, Nautilus they, going they to the Texas State Fair and then frying drinks. And then to the loose caboose. What is this science? Let's go, loose caboose. Is, yeah. Well, it's like, how do you fry butter? I mean, people fry ice cream. I, I think that's fine. You just batter it. Oh, Mexican it. fried ice yeah, cream. Yeah, you can't really favorite. batter anything. All right. Some. Oh, I want to try oh, it. Oh, my gosh. How does fried Coke work? What? The sounds of discovery. <laughs> like, oh, I think a donut that's so frozen Coca Cola flavored batter. That's not Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. And I then top with Coca Cola like... syrup. That's not as fun. I thought you just like eat Coke into a fryer. <laughs> <I> <laughs> like, how like does that. that work? I also assumed that that was it as well. Zach got so excited he had to leave the room and go fry <laughs> something up. And uh, Oops. As long as this. Uh, 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 all right, uh, he's see. doing serious business actually. <laughs> Taking care of our ROVs while we, uh, well, we talk about, about the loose caboose and uh, plan our next trip to the Texas State Fair. And yeah, choose between mayo and ranch dressing, apparently. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> I'm telling you, mayo. Not a choice, Kukui. It's world. not a choice. <laughs> okay. So, for fried ice cream. Ice cream is scooped out of the carton, rolled in a crust of frosted flakes, corn flakes, or dipped in batter. This is done just before frying and then frozen overnight on a baking sheet in the freezer, which gets the ec the which gets the ice cream cold again, so it doesn't melt. It will literally be your favorite thing yeah. you've ever had oh, if okay. you've not had so this. So it's yeah, so you you scoop it out and then you like batter it and then you freeze it overnight and then you fry it. You fry it real quick. Frozen, yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Everyone go do this right now. Get some ice cream, some frosted Well, maybe not right flakes. now, but like tomorrow. No, I mean, right now. For some people, it is the middle of their day. So. Yeah. yeah. And right. some I'm just people thinking about the, the extra night. freezing time that it needs. Oh, uh, but yeah, I, uh, well, I mean, start your prep right now. I know, right? <laughs> Go get the ice cream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is your sign to do it. Yeah. Is it 2 a.m.? Go. Yeah. <laughs> Go. Two o'clock in the afternoon. Go. Our when shops you, are sleeping, us, right? Tell us in the comments <laughs> when you when you when you've got it done. Tell us in the comments. We'll be over. There's an uh, izakaya back at home, and oh. they do a uh, fried like tempura brownie. <gasps> oh my god! Oh. Like they they wow. dip it in tempura batter, like a big chunk of brownie, and then they put like, ice cream, but like Sounds put so it with good. vanilla ice cream and some toppings. Oof. But fried ice cream is ono. It's yeah. it is delicious. That sounds and so good. And fried cheesecake. There's a place in Hilo called Sakura. Oh my gosh, yes. Sakura's Ooh. has. I think they may also dip it in tempura batter, like a whole piece of cheesecake, Ooh. and they dip it and they fry, fry it. it, and with ice cream, some chocolate syrup, and whipped cream. Oh my gosh, that sounds amazing. Wow. Oh, that sounds wow. like heaven. That sounds really good. It was indeed heaven. To Mahina's uh, point too, it's an interesting controversy over the origin of fried ice cream as a as a as one of proud Mexican heritage. Um, I always heard that it is uh, a product of Mexico. Uh, fried ice cream, Mexican fried ice cream, but apparently the Japanese <laughs> insist that it was first uh, done with tempura uh, and uh, began in, in Japanese tempura restaurants. So 
uh, but by the 80s, which is the greatest decade of all time, <laughs> um, then uh, it was clearly associated with Mexican restaurants when the national chain Chi Chi's adopted it as their signature dessert. Oh. Yeah, a little bit of history for you, a little bit of controversy, a little Japanese Mexican showdown over deep fried ice cream. Uh, Let's that's go. That's interesting. Good. Yeah. Not what I would have thought the showdown would be about, <laughs> but I'm, I'm about it. Hey. Yeah. Yes. So glad to have fried ice cream in my life. <laughs> Never had it. I will find a way to have it in my life. <laughs> oh, there's there are ways. Yeah. There's another, um, and I think it's also gluten free too. Um, poi mochi. Poi mochi. Poi mochi. I yeah. do love a good it's mochi. Hot, though, because yeah. if you go to the farmer's market and they don't give you the one straight out of the walk, it's not. It's just chewy and you're going to break your tooth on it. <laughs> there is a yeah. way to, to make it. It's actually kind of quick at home, too. You just put a, um, one whole box of mochico flour, one cup of granulated sugar, half a pound of poi, a cup of water. You mix it and then you fry in whatever kind of oil you like, fry them in, and then eat it. Ooh, that okay. sounds good. Coconut? Can you, fry, can you fry coconut mm -hmm. oil? Oh, yeah, yeah you can just try good, the batch huh? and coconut Definitely. oil, and it was good. Yeah. How long do you have to mix it in the... Is it in the processor, or is it, like, in a mixing? Oh, um, I mean, you can do it in the processor, but I hand mix it, because I don't know where to get a food processor from. But, um, yeah, so you just, like, buy poi from the supermarket that's already made, and then you just mix it with all the dry ingredients and water, and, yeah. Okay. Actually, it takes, like, maybe, like... Two minutes if you were to hand, okay. hand stir it. Yeah. 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 Mm. Wow. All if right. I can find poi on the mainland, I'm going to have to give that a try. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really good. I, I do have a box of uh, Machiko sitting around because <gasps> I, I ordered a couple recently in order to uh, uh, make up some butter mochi. <gasps> I don't butter do it with the dried mochi. coconut in it. I, I skipped that bit, but oh my gosh. Butter mochi. Yes. I, I, I was missing Hawaii and needed a treat. Yeah. A corner piece. Yeah. Always oh, go for the corner piece, piece of butter mochi. Ooh, yeah. The so corner pieces mochi, are awesome. That's a pro tip, yes. you guys. <laughs> Clearly, she loves to share. Yeah. She loves to share the best. <laughs> I know. You're Get welcome. it, Marina. Get that corner piece. I love it. What is I, butter mochi? What, what did I miss? Oh, that boy. What good. is butter mochi? <laughs> <laughs> you almost oh, just got yeeted, yeeted off the ship there. <laughs> Kukui was going to throw you right <laughs> over for it. Today's Any English closer. word of the day is yeet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a scientific term. Oh. Yeah, occasionally, yes. I'm a fan. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Another good one, I like honey toast. Honey toast. Mm. Yeah, Japanese honey toast. You have to get like you have yeah. to go to the bakery and get like the thick bread, oh. and then you toast it with butter. You put honey on oh, it that and toast so it, good. and then you just cut out the inside of it, leave the crust as is whole, and then you make cube slices. And it has to be Ooh. vanilla bean ice cream, oh. um, mochi balls, condensed milk mm -hmm. and you can slice up strawberries and I prefer Oreo fins. Oh my god. To be like Ooh. crumbled on top <laughs> because it's just a better like crunch and consistency. It's not so thick. This as sounds ne next expedition Mahina's yeah. gonna be in the kitchen, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh we'd be making grinds, but we'd also need a better permit so we could fish. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Um no. Just kidding. We love you, Papa Hana Yeah, we cultural rights there. <laughs> but oh, we've seen plenty, yeah. Ma yeah. We had uh, a lot of mahi mahi spottings. Oh my gosh. Yeah, would be uh, would be nice. Bring lap chong. Mm. Oh, we better stop. We don't have another meal for like 10 hours. Now. <laughs> okay, so if y'all if y'all want something that's kind of good, spicy, and just cheap to make, and kind of just I don't know. Give it uh, to us. It's called firecrackers. And what it is, you take saltine. Actually, I got the recipe right here because Jake Bonnie was asking about it. <laughs> <laughs> I had to send it to him. But what it is, it's saltine crackers with garlic powder, onion powder, black pepper, ranch dressing mix, and red pepper flakes and olive oil. And what it is, you Ooh. stick the saltines all together like that and throw all that stuff in together and then shake it up. <laughs> and oh my god, it, they're so good. They're Wait, question. That sounds yes. ranch can you Can you use mayonnaise? <laughs> you Instead of you well, absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> no. It's a powder. You said powder. Yeah, the ranch dressing powder. Oh, yeah. Yeah. okay, okay, sorry. The mix packet. That, that's, yeah. I'm sorry, but yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. It's like that would be your recipe of like buttermilk. Yes. Yeah, the buttermilk. So but dry. Yes. I guess. Oh. Yes. 
okay, okay. I'm learning. Wow. Yeah, the, the salt, yeah, that saltine, yeah, trust me, that, that's like my favorite go-to thing whenever it's cold, especially, like whenever we get mm -hmm. winter and stuff like that, that's like my go-to. Um, there's an H-E-B I go shopping at and they have them there all the time and I get like two of them. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, they come already made? Yeah, they make them. Uh, they just you find them anywhere. Uh, you find my Bucky's. Oh, that's right. Y'all don't know what oh Bucky's. Oh my God, Bucky's. I know what I Bucky's know. is. Bucky's. I lived in, no I lived in Texas for a couple of years. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Bucky's. Yeah. Yeah. Is Bucky's the one with the squirrel? The uh, yeah. Yes. No. Oh. Bucky the Beaver. <laughs> Bucky the Beaver. <laughs> I know that. I know that ridiculous. I actually thing. drove past a Bucky's when Absolutely I was in Tennessee not. about a month and a half ago. What? There's one in Tennessee now. Apparently. Yeah, Georgia. They're in Florida. Dang. Florida. Ooh, they're they're getting around. They are getting around. They are. They're seeing a pattern here. here. It's not crossing over, I promise you. It's just, it looks like it. I know, I did that too. That's why I was watching for a minute and under the same. But yeah, Bucky's. I love Bucky's. And uh, all I like to, every time I go there, um, go road trips, I usually stop at Bucky's and I'll probably end up spending mm -hmm. 50 $60 on myself. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's just expensive too. Okay, so usually I get a, I go in there for breakfast. If I go in there for breakfast, I just get a um, either breakfast taco with some brisket and eggs. And, Dang, <laughs> they got that in Texas yeah. at a gas station brisket taco. Oh, they yeah, have they like a brisket taco. So jerky get, deli station. Yeah, they have like a whole like a whole like a deli case. That's yeah, it. yeah. So and then they got like the donuts. So everything's kind of like right there too. And so they have the jerky. They have. Pastries, and they got something else. I forgot what it was. I can't think of it off my head. Aisles and aisles of merch. This is not just your regular gas station. <laughs> Bucky's is like it's, uh, it's, like, a it's like a Walmart <laughs> focused on a squirrel that also <laughs> happens to sell gas and food. Yeah. It's, it's a beaver. squirrel. That is yeah. It's a beaver. Bucky oh, the beaver. Okay, okay. Oh, it's a beaver. Bucky yeah. the beaver. Bucky yeah. Yeah. So I'm what I'm sorry, hearing Bucky. is that Bucky's is an experience. Yes. Bucky's yes. Is an experience. <laughs> so, Thank you. So Dr. there's Dr. literally yeah. people Thanks on TikTok and like different sites that they're like, it's like they're from out of state or from another country. Like we gotta go Bucky's because you know, and then they like do their whole experience, and they're just like, what? What is all this? It's a vibe. It's a vibe. It's America a, vibe. It's quite. It's quite the experience. It is. And my favorite things are the candy pecans. Oh my god. Oh, Prawns. Yummy. Candy pecans. <laughs> Prawns. <laughs> pecans. <laughs> Pecans, however you want to say it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, they uh, they caramelize them and they put like um, brown sugar, and cinnamon, all on top of them when it's when it's all caramelized and hardened and everything. Oh my god, those. Uh, Did you bring any on board? I want some caramelized pecans. I ate them actually on the plane. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, they always go first. I think they're so good. Man. They are. Pecans. What? You know what I love? That's from Texas. What's I think up? they're from Texas. Well. I know they're big in Texas. Kalachis. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, I forgot. That's not oh a, my that's God. Not, that's yes, not a thing anywhere else. Yeah, they're kolaches. amazing. So, is. Uh, you don't know what kolaches are? <laughs> okay, so. Regional foods, man. I love I it. I know. <laughs> oh, Texas. So, kolaches are just like, it's. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, like a giant pig in a blanket almost? I guess so. But, but like there's the, there's also sweet ones. Too. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So they have savory ones too. So, the, usually the actual kolaches, it's like a. Almost like a dinner roll bread, and it's wrapped around either a sausage or basically anything. You can make a kolache out of anything, but the traditional way is that you get some kind of sausage. It can be deer sausage, pork sausage, meat sausage. But they also have, I've seen them before, but they have like tofu sausages or vegan okay. <laughs> sausages. <Send that laughs> okay, <way>. cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was saying that. But um, I've only seen those at some places, but not all the places I go to because I. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, because, well, Texas. Yeah. <laughs> we love you. All our viewers from Texas. Absolutely. Like, oh, and speaking of which, I was telling, who was I talking to? I thought I was talking to Mahina and Kukui about if I was on the next cruise with them or wh whoever, oh. I was going to try to see if I can bring um, barbecue stuff and mm. I can make brisket and maybe some ribs if, Ooh, if they allow it. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But. I mean, there's there's these things from for like Amber. She won't eat it, so. <laughs> <laughs> you can, uh, you know, smoke up some tofu. Okay, I'll smoke some tofu <laughs> <laughs> if they let me. But uh, that'd be fun. It's like a two-day thing, though. Yeah. Transit back. That's good yeah. That. I don't know how they feel about me bringing what is it, my uh, my applewood chips and all the stuff on the plane. <laughs> 
see me walking with a cooler. Well, actually, you know, I've, I've done the cooler thing when I go hunting, but I don't know about apple chips. <laughs> I can get you some good uh, Kiave. Oh, yeah. Little, yeah. Little, uh, little yeah. bricks. I wonder how yeah. Some we, guava too. I don't want to. I don't want to mm -hmm. say that you know we can really compete with Texas, but we can compete with Texas. <laughs> <in Omaha. laughs> we know how to barbecue, Oma. Yeah, we can play. Huh? I think there's definite competition there. Yeah, yeah when he sure. bought you going. Given I mostly Ooh. know uh, West Texas uh, food, which is uh, excellent. Oh yeah. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Oh yeah. Yeah, Houston though. Houston always got like, something going on with it. There, there's all kind of stuff there everything almost everything i say oh yeah i can imagine and like you go one part it's like little mexico you go to another part where it's literally called on the you look on google maps it says little china <laughs> on it wow and then um in some parts of uh that part of houston there's like it's kind of like israeli stores everywhere and then they got some like it, it, it's that's kind of reason i like kind of i kind of like houston it's really diverse it, yeah, more it has a little bit of everything more multicultural there yeah, yeah. so I mean, and then you got your hood, and you got your you got your rich side of the town too, and it's it's always it's always like kind of funny to see like different things. Like you walk ten feet one way, and it's really nice, and you walk the other way, it's the hood. <laughs> but yeah. 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 Uh, Michigan, uh, one of the regional foods we have there, uh, uh, found mostly in northern Michigan, is something called the Cornish pasty. Uh, yeah, and it's, it is literally originally from uh, Cornwall, England, but uh, oh. yeah, it's like a, it, um, it, it's almost like, like kind of like stew ingredients uh, mm -hmm. without, without the, the sauce in um, like, like a, like a small pastry. pastry yeah. Ooh, yeah. yeah. So like a little pie crust and uh, yeah, it's like uh, the traditional ones are like beef, potato, rutabaga, which is a root ve uh, vegetable um, yeah, and a couple other things, some seasonings. It's like an English pie kind of. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit English yeah. Ham pie. This yeah. Sounds great. And the the big dividing thing in Michigan is whether you uh, you dip your pasty in ketchup or brown gravy. Oh. Brown, but not brown mayonnaise. gravy. I, I'm, but a, not I'm mayonnaise a gravy perfectly. person. Gravy. <laughs> yes. Gravy. gravy through and through. <laughs> ketchup. That's like for a juvenile palate. You know. <laughs> hey, <yeah. laughs> ketchup we is like good. give the ketchup to the kids. Yeah. And you know, this is, uh, pasties are actually a big thing in Australia too. I yeah. found out from some Australian friends, uh -huh. the, and a lot of them are ketchup fans, and oh. we get into it. Oh. You know? It's popular yeah. in Australia. We have this whole debate yeah. over yeah. ketchup I'll, versus I'll gravy. Yeah, they get yeah. Meat pie. Oh, the pie. Yeah, and in southern Michigan, uh, it's it's more Coney dogs, which I never oh. really got into oh. when I was there. But yeah, it's like it's sort of like sort of like chili dogs. And I know I'm gonna say that, and I'm gonna get like totally piled on by any Michiganders in the chat. But uh, yeah, it's <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. And there's like Flint style versus Detroit style. And oh. Yeah. So oh. you know, another another thing we like to butt heads over. Yeah. yeah. Why it's kind of like a you know trash talk between Michigan and Ohio. So. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that gets a little wild, though. Yeah, right? I yeah, can. That's you know, quite the else. rivalry. It is. <laughs> yeah. It's funny. Mm. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Gravy well. on pasties. It's better. Yeah, gravy. <laughs> but is it already kind of soupy on the inside? I'm trying to imagine this. Maybe. <laughs> come, a little, come a little closer. Yeah, we didn't quite hear you. Yeah. Oh, is it already kind of soupy on the inside because you said it was like soup inside of a pastry um it's it's uh it's not like soupy it's not like a uh oh what are the pizza things calzones, uh, po calzones yeah oh. <laughs> or hot pockets hot pockets works too hot hot pockets. <laughs> pasties are way better than hot who pockets who said hot pockets <laughs> who said that oh my god Zach. Yes, Zach. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh we should have brought hot pockets oh no <laughs> Funny. I don't like burning my mouth. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, yeah, it, it's lava. definitely something where you want where you want the gravy with it. Yeah. Gravy on everything. Mm-hmm. Let's get a soup. You made it, you said soupy, and I was thinking soup up dumplings. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. See, that, that sounds good actually right now. <laughs> it really does, doesn't it? <laughs> See, and I'm thinking about some deep dish pizza. <laughs> Detroit or Chicago style? Chicago. Chicago. Detroit? There is a Detroit style. Detroit. Yes, there is a Detroit style. It's not a deep dish pizza. Oh yeah, oh there is deep God. Detroit no, deep dish. No, 
No, know Detroit is square. Weird, what about New like, York? What about New York? Bizarre. New, New York slices crust. are pretty good. And New York, yeah, New York is pretty I'm, good. I'm not saying yeah. anything about, like, uh, thin Cheap, crust pizza slice. has its place. It is a wonderful thing sometimes. No, there is such a thing as Detroit deep crust, uh, uh, deep dish. Yeah, but it's not actually deep dish pizza. <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Don't worry, I actually... Um, you know, I'm not actually a big fan of deep dish in general, but I do like Chicago deep dish Thank you. over yes. Detroit. <laughs> Much appreciated. Yeah. Okay, what about bazookies? Bazookies? What are bazookies? What What are bazookies? Yes. Pizza cookies. Oh. oh. What? <laughs> it's like, like a pizza bagel. It's a cookie that's no, no, the like, size of a pizza. Yeah, exactly. Does it come in a frozen box? It can. Wait, it can be the size of a okay. pizza, not a pizza the size of a cookie? It's like a cookie cake. No. It's a cookie cake. It's like a cookie pizza. It's like a cookie pizza. I was like, what is that? No, it's like a cookie pizza. <laughs> it's a pizza, but made of a cookie. So you know what we used to do oh. when I was growing up occasionally was we would get those uh, uh, Pillsbury like uh, uh, biscuits that come in the exploding cans. Yes. Love those <gasps> I, yeah. hate, I hate those cans <laughs> so much. I hate them. I hate them. <laughs> um, but yeah, they, they have good things inside. So um, yeah, you, you, take the, you take the biscuit. You, you uh, sort of shape it into a teeny little pizza crust, and you fill it with sauce and all your toppings and stuff, and you get pizza biscuits. And that's what that reminds me of. And they're Ooh. so good. Yeah. It's so easy, and it's so good, and it's great if you got picky eaters in the family because mm -hmm. they can do do up an individual one or two their own way. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Like a personal pan pizza, but... But cuter. Biscuit. Yeah. <laughs> and you know how delicious those biscuits are. Oh, they are delicious. Gosh. Even when you fry them. Oh. <laughs> you can make donuts. That's how you make. Or, or, um, somebody told me how to make donuts like that, and I was like, no, "There's no donuts. way." Donuts. Yeah, you can make donuts. donuts. And you just you know, get yourself a little. Um, I don't know, like a little punch. Punch the hole out in the middle. And what was that? Throw what was that? Throw them in the frying oil. Roll it in sugar. No, I saw that too, Zach. What was that? Yeah, I don't uh, know. Kraken. Uh, <laughs> was that a fish? I just saw okay. something go, <laughs> Yeah. Oh no. I was like. Did we drop something? But no, no. might have been a fish. Think, oh, I think I just saw a fish tail. Yeah. How are you guys seeing this? It's in the uh, up camp. Luck of the draw. Piece of, uh, tape oh. Piece of tape? Oh, okay. I saw the tape, but there was like yeah. something like she brown. Yeah, like there was something bigger than we <laughs> Yeah. Uh. I guess we'll see what comes on board. Yeah, it's only at Atlanta, so maybe, maybe, I don't know. Okay. But, yeah, so, you, yeah, you do the whole... Actually, I use powder sugar. I don't use granule sugar because if you use powder sugar or use granule sugar, it'll um, it doesn't like melt right, I guess, or it doesn't like uh, like mix right whenever you put like because whatever the way I make mine, I make mine with a little heavy cream and a little bit of milk, mix it all together, and then just use that as the as the glaze. But again, you use powder sugar, not granule sugar. Mmm, that sounds good. What's up? Oh. Yeah, man. Says quitting. Yeah, this is nasty. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we went back and forth a few times, and that's just the way it wants to be. It didn't cross or anything like that. It just looks real nasty. That's what I said. <laughs> real, real nasty. You said nasty. I said real no, nasty. No, I said it, it is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Zach. Can you let me know when you get to close to 50 meters? I got to do a few things over here. What is that? <laughs> Silvery. 
What was that? Just silvery. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be we'll be we'll be there for it. Zach mentioned powdered sugar. Have you guys ever tried a beignet before? Oh my god! Oh, it's one of those things I never Let's got to go. try that I want to. It's, it's up there on the list really with malasada. Okay. Wait, what is? Yes. Yeah, beignet. So. Oh yeah, beignet with cafe a la. Yeah. Cafe Ooh. Yeah. That's that. Those are fake beignets. Thank you. Very but much. I don't know. I kind of <laughs> like. Those are fake. No, you, can't, you cannot. No, you cannot. Wait. So which are the I'm real ones? Talking, Getting homemade ones. Like actual. Like somebody actually going out and making the. To go to Cafe Du Monde. Yeah. Cafe yeah. Du Monde, let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Wait, what? Yeah. You're talking about the box mixes? Don't they sell like the box mixes? They, they have it. box mixes, yeah. I've never made them successfully. Yeah. Like so, the way they make them at so the actual place. I, uh, my wife, she has a, a friend, or she used to have a friend that was, um, her mom was straight from uh, oh, East no. Louisiana. <laughs> and she, she was straight coon. I'm not going to say the full phrase of that, but she was straight coon and, um, you know, Lady could cook. She could cook. Oh my God! And she made, um, uh, we wanted for her friend Candace's birthday one year. I think of what it was. And uh, her mom had made some gumbo. Oh my God! She made like three different kinds of gumbo. She made seafood gumbo. She made sausage gumbo. And she made crawfish gumbo. Oh my God! <laughs> it was all good. And then she made homemade jambalaya. But then yeah. she brought up the beignets. Oh my god, those were so good. And they were handmade. Hand, handmade. Oh my god. And she just powdered sugar all over those things. Ooh. But yeah, so I love Cajun food. We were out at sea with um, Uncle Gary, and he actually made, he whipped up like malasadas. Mm. Ooh. And on and four? Sea, yeah. At that man, that man can make when anything. We were, we were crossing Pico'a'akea, the equator, and he's just like, wake up, and there's a bowl of like fried fresh, and they're like smaller too. Leonard's, I don't go to Leonard's. I only eat my mother's malasanas or Uncle Gary's. Oh my gosh. Um, this this Mahino over here. Yeah. <laughs> I do like, not go to Leonard's. Yeah. Have you tried Texas malasadas? malasadas? Oh my gosh, we got a Hawaiian princess <laughs> yeah. over here, everybody. For real, Wait, yeah. Have you tried, but it. have you tried Texas? Texas on Big Island? Their malasadas? No, girl, I just said I only my mother's. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, no, okay. But you also, uh, yeah, I, I agree. No nothing girl, no nothing beats homemade malasadas, but a close <laughs> second, if you can't find anything else on like Big Island, yeah. Texas. Texas. Mm. I'm gonna be honest. I may make some enemies here from Oahu too, but they're yeah. better than Leonard's. <laughs> oh really? Be yeah, because on, on Oahu honest. it's it's all about Leonard's. It's yeah. just what legendary. Is, uh, Leonard's is good. Leonard's what did, is what good. did Mahina Big. call it earlier? She said, I "Yeah, I Leonard's is for that. Um, oh, <laughs> what, what kind of palate? The oh, ju a juvenile, juvenile palate. palate. <laughs> palate. <laughs> juvenile palate. Oh. So, so you're calling uh, them ketchup level? Oh, ketchup <laughs> level. You might as well put ketchup on your Leonard's malasada. Yeah, fill your malasada with ketchup. You know, I have an actually. Just fried bread with sugar, like 10, folks. That's right? Really? See? Barbecue yeah, sauce Dr. is so Mel. much better. Yeah. No, it's not. Ketchup is the best. Oh, my God. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Barbecue sauce Star is what? exceptionally oh. better than ketchup. Is the best. I mean, they're both tomato sugar, yeah. but one just has more flavor. Because Can we just agree that we should go to Cafe Du Monde? Yeah. Cafe Du Monde. I think we should do a food tour. Yeah. I agree. Food tour. Stop by Mahina's house. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and then my mom said that she can make pot stickers for hey, everybody. Yeah, and there's also there's also a veggie version too. So. Oh my goodness! Oh wow! Wow! I'm so happy right now. Just.
thinking about gonna, <laughs> gonna dream about all of these sweets. Yeah, looks like Chad's having fun with it too. I know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We got some good, yeah. we got some good uh, yeah, recommendations. Some good. Yeah, some some interesting. Yeah, yeah. Interesting ones. I've never had a grilled peanut butter and jelly sandwich. You guys ever had a grilled that pee pee peanut? No, peanut? but I, that would be like worth trying. Peanut, like with a press? ketchup or mayonnaise? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no. You know, I've seen people uh, neither. I toasted my PBJ last night. Oh. And, Ooh. and then Fancy. you just put you just put little like cinnamon and honey. Oh my gosh. And then. <laughs> yeah, I know we have great food on board. I we talk like we're starving, but we're not. We're, fed very, well. we're um, very well fed. You yeah, do not worry about different us. proteins. There's always vegetarian options, but sometimes you just want like an egg salad sandwich or peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Have you ever had a trifecta peanut butter sandwich? What is this? Inform okay. me. Enlighten. So you get peanut butter, honey, Nutella mm. on one side, and on the oh other side God. you get chocolate, <gasps> jelly up or jam of choice, and uh, marshmallow. That's a marshmallow. Oh. And you put it all together? Okay. Put it all yeah. together. This sounds like a I Texas State Fair thing. Isn't <laughs> it? They serve this at the loose caboose, then they fry it. No, that's, <laughs> a, that's, a, that's a late night thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it sounds like it. It reminds me of that um, ice cream dish at have you heard of Brahms, that ice cream shop? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they had, they had that tuxedo sundae, where mm. it also has that Jet Puff marshmallow in it with chocolate yeah. sauce. Ooh. Ooh. Well, we do have that cookie jar full of marshmallows. <laughs> oh. Ancient Cretaceous period <laughs> <laughs> They have been there this entire I'm, I'm time. I'm pretty sure they're, like, lithified. They're basically yeah. like pillow basalts now. <laughs> Little pillow basalts in the, in the mess. Montreal textured. They do have some butter. So last year on 138, we uh, we had a supply of Rice Krispies. Oh. So, um, yeah, we would make Rice Krispies in the microwave once uh, the marshmallows started oh, rice rolling Krispie out. Rice Krispie treats. So get, a oh. of, get a hunk of marshmallows, a little bit of butter out of the fridge, uh, mix it up with, you know, um, put those on top of uh, uh, some Rice Krispies on a plate, shove them in a microwave for 30, mi uh, 30 seconds. Not 30 minutes. You'd set the place on fire. <laughs> <laughs> 30 <laughs> seconds. Who, who's, who <laughs> likes their marshmallow on fire? You just stir it all together real quick, and you got yourself a oh. little ship's... Uh, Wait, what? Who, who lights I, their marshmallow on fire when you roast them? When who you does that? Mallows. Um, for, oh, yeah, yeah. Nah. Schmores, schmores. Are you yeah, a, you schmores. light it on fire? Sometimes. I, I, sometimes. Yeah. If I'm if I'm impatient, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I like it crispy. I'm a, I'm a gold. I'm a, a gold all the way around. Oh, gotta be perfectly gold. Oh. Crispy gold. Mushy so mushy center. Mushy yeah, center. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Like get it just liquefied in the middle, but that yeah. golden brown as much as you can on the outside. Yeah. 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 Zach, that's Robert, how about you? How do you roast your marshmallows? Burn just burn them, yeah. Burn them, burn them, Texas. Oh, yeah, burn them. That's how. I, yeah, I don't know why. I, I like that little. The char. It's the char, but I do. I do get them a little soft on the inside first, so yeah. it's not just char and then plain like, marshmallow. You gotta yeah. kind of cook yeah. the inside a little bit, but then give it that last little, little you know, flambe. Just a little. Ah. Who's a well done steak person here? Ooh. Oh no. No. Oh, I Me guess. medium okay. rare. <laughs> no. He knows about to go out, go off on you. <laughs> Yeah, you cannot ruin a steak. Yeah. Yeah, yeah please don't do that to your steaks. Yes. Yeah. It's not fair. That's cruel and unusual punishment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, if it's medium rare, then it's not steak fish, it's rubber. Mm. I got to agree. I'm going to have to wrap this little, little disagreement again. It'll be the ranch and mayo thing all over again. <laughs> but actually, you know what? I've seen someone actually. Oh this, is gonna, this is gonna switch y'all's minds. So I've seen people put ketchup on steaks. I've seen people put uh, dip their peanut butter jellies in mayo. Ooh. <laughs> okay, now that. But I Zach, you live in with. Texas. You've seen everything. People yeah, do all kinds of nonsense. In Texas. <laughs> Come on. Now mayo on sandwich, um, grilled cheese. If you put mayo on the outside of the toast, and grill it, it yeah. crusts up no. beautifully. Yeah. Oh, no. oh what? when you're grilling it? When you're it. grilling it. Oh, yeah. interesting. It's, it's next level. Speaking of grilled cheese, my friend makes, um, she introduced me to this interesting sandwich where it's like grilled cheese, but you put applesauce in it. Oh, what? hey, no. applesauce. Yeah. It's actually pretty good. Yeah. I could see it. I yeah. could see it. It's like sweet, salty. Sounds good. You know, yeah. I can see that um, because, yeah, growing up, my family would do apple pie for dessert occasionally. And, no, uh, you did not. You're about, uh, no, uh, 
<laughs> don't know where that was going. No, but, I know. Uh, <laughs> uh, apple, apple pie for dessert every now and again. And um, with that, a slice of uh, extra sharp cheddar. This is where it was going. What? No, oh, you're, absolutely you're, you're, not. You're I know it's apple great. It's good. Cheese? Apple yeah. pie with cheese. With I a little bit of extra it. sharp cheddar on the side. You might as well put cheese curds it on It doesn't there. sound like it works, heck? but it does. Come on. Come on. Yeah. No. Have you tried it? I would no. definitely try it. <laughs> I would definitely do it. It's not like an American slice of like cheese. It's like you just eat no, it. No, proper it cheddar. Cheese? Okay, it's proper cheese. It's like it's like cheddar. literally it's a slice of cheese. cheese. It's a slice of cheese. Yeah. It kind of yeah, offsets right the sweetness of the, of the apples. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. I guess no, it, it's, cheese. it's a terrible I, I idea. But we it. It, it sounds weird, but it works. It. No, I would get like, down with it. Like I was skeptical the first time I I was introduced to it. I'm like, I don't know about this. I yeah, same thing it. with the peanut butter and the pancakes. Yeah. yeah. No, peanut butter on the pancakes makes sense. Cheese on your apples. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't put it on the apples. Oh, wait, no, cheese you, and apples is really good, yeah. but not apple pie. It's, it's like, it's kind of like the palate cleanser, you know? Mm. You, you take a bite of pie, and then you have a little bit of cheese, and then you have a little bit of That's how I've seen it. I have seen it with palate. cheese yeah. on top of your apple pie. Like <laughs> melted on top. <laughs> like that is on weird. top of the crust. Okay, yeah. I'm not that extreme. Oh, <laughs> my. No, but with the sandwich, it is melted with the applesauce. Mm. I could kind of see that, yeah. In between the bread, and you eat it. It's I might I might have a thing against the cheese and apples that is so strong that I am well, I, I will like let y'all enjoy that yourself. Yeah. And like you know jelly or something, you know? I okay, yeah, that. yeah, maybe. Yeah. The yeah, it, maybe the right cheese, but like <laughs> the right? but like sharp cheddar or like American. Maybe not, but, yeah. 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 And we're, you know what? Funny. Chad is breaking out the mango ice cream without us. Yeah, they are. <laughs> We've got all kinds. Oh, it says smoked Gouda. It works really well with Ooh, apple pie. Smoked that would Gouda. be amazing. It's got a gentle flavor. Smoked Gouda. I love yeah, smoked Gouda. Lingers Brie. for a while. Some good brie. Brie. You can see it. Brie. Oh, yeah. Brie and apples no. is good. Look at this. Brie and oh pears is good. Yeah. Come like on. Bake, like brie, all baked brie, together. Brie. We're deep in the realm of the ancestors, and they are not impressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got a bunch of princes and princesses yeah, medium, running around medium here. Rare steak Can I please steak. have my beignets for breakfast? Yeah. And uh, I like smoked gouda. On I know, as we're over here, who, um, what do we have for breakfast this morning? Crepes? <laughs> <laughs> Crepes, donuts, cookies, yeah. fruit. Fruit. Yeah, fruit. Crepes. Oatmeal. Yeah, we, oh, we are feasting Three on types of all. eggs. And somehow yet, I find myself now very hungry and desperate. For, I would just take some applesauce. Yeah. Come on. Mm -hmm. But I'll you wait You know what I've been getting into making every now and again? Batches of jalapeno yeah, jelly. Oh, jalapeno <gasps> jelly yeah. sounds yeah. great. Oh. Interesting. Honestly, I'm jalapeno intrigued. anything sounds yeah. good. I'm intrigued. It's really good. It sounds like awesome. you get some heat, depending on how much, how many of the seeds uh -huh. you put in. And then you just get this really sweet jalapeno flavor, and it's just the vinegar, yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. I have actually at home uh, habanero jelly. Ooh. Habanero, yeah, yeah, it's a little spicy. So I, I I overestimated my my tolerance, <laughs> about it. but um, it is like that. so stinking good. <laughs> it's oh, so man. good, um, but I can't eat as much I as I want it. of it. So I like it burns putting my spicy face jelly on ice right. cream. I found out. <laughs> oh, spicy, really good ice cream oh. topping. Spicy jelly. Yeah, like jalapeno jelly it's on good. vanilla ice cream. Ice cream. Yeah, it works. It's good. Yeah. Who loves uh, chips with, with salsa and cream cheese? Who loves that? Cream Ooh. cheese? Salsa and cream, cream cheese. cheese? Yeah, like a block of cream cheese, and then you just pour salsa yes. over it, and then you just use it as That's a dip good. for your chips. So it's good. Really good. Yeah, so good. Yeah, that would be really that. good. And if you use like a mango salsa or a mango habanero Ooh. salsa, it's like, oh, oh, come on. Mango salsa. Come on. <laughs> mango salsa, absolutely. Yes. Oh, oh jalapeno gosh. margaritas. I don't think oh I'm allowed to say that God. on SPO, but yes. <laughs> 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 absolutely. Tahine and lihing rim. Oh, tahine and With the mango popping Lihing is too sweet. Let's with the go. Tahine. Yeah. Tahine is good. On the rocks only. Tahine is also opening the bar. EV Nautilus. Yeah. Late night bar. Right after the 8 to 12 one. Oh. Morning and night. Yeah. <laughs> nope, just kidding. Uh, We're uh, staying focused. Food. Staying clear minded. Yep. Focused on food. <laughs> yes. Yep. <laughs> I don't think we're talking about a single um, STEM. No. <laughs> food well, science. we can talk about Stop the chemistry. It. Let's food talk science. about the chemical. We can do a little chemical analysis. Well, yeah, a little chemical analysis of some of these foods. Hey, food, isotopes. food is both science and art and delicious. Boom. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Boom. Eel. And yes, that was three, not two. So both was grammatically incorrect, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's getting late. Yeah.
Oh, so we're going to be doing some uh, midnight lab action. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. It's not going to be an early night for some folks. we got to take it's care of these gonna samples. It's going to be early morning because i got to get that saw running. Sorry. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. You guys will be down in the lab. I'll be in the studio. Again, anybody want to come party in the studio, you're more than welcome. Yay. Oh, all night long. <laughs> <laughs> Time for music all with Dan. Night long. I don't think Wonderful. I can sing that one to the middle school. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on in this background? Uh, uh, giggle fest. <laughs> it's day 19. Yeah, you just got a request for Ipanema. Oh, oh I do love that song. It's oh, still in my, still in my head. Oh my gosh, else? it's in everybody's <laughs> heads. Yeah. <laughs> you guys want it to be back? <laughs> so really easy, yeah? <laughs> You got the compliment. It's it's a uh, tall and tanned, young and lovely. So everyone with me, come on. Tall, tall and tanned, tan, young and lovely. The girl from me, Benima goes walking. All she passes, although she passes, go up. Ah. <laughs> you guys got it now. <laughs> We got the back row, got the back row <laughs> chorus back here. <laughs> oh, it is a sad song. I've been, it's really hard. No, it's I'm hard just to, cry laughing over here, don't it, mind it, me. It's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to be back here on the back row amongst all these amazing humans who are going to leave me for the ocean in just uh, nine days time at the end of this expedition. So, mm, girl from no. Ipanema's metaphor, making me sad. Not nine really. days? Right? Yeah. That was fast. I mean, the math works. It checks out. I just doesn't seem right. Yeah. Nine it days. Doesn't feel right, does it? So we're going to have to hijack the ship, take it to Nolens. Yeah. Oh. I think Dr. Ballard might have an issue with that. No, he can meet us there. He knows it. He'll meet us there. <laughs> Cafe du Monde. We'll just say Cafe du Monde. He said, I'll be there. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Jambalaya. Some beans, jambalaya. Yeah. Ooh. So etouffee. Crawfish etouffee. Oh. <laughs> Ooh, etouffee. Ooh. <laughs> 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 no, I love etouffee. Put some rice salt underneath it. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, I think my, I think it's my uh, amazing, my amazing mom, um, telling a story of growing up when her parents used to always stop just between Tucson and Nogales. She grew up in Tucson, Arizona. Uh, for apple mm. pie with cheese, and they loved it. Yes. It was a favorite wow. of my great grandparents, so I better love it. I guess I, I guess I have to change my tune. Mom, I hope you're having a great time in Italy, and uh, there with with my dad, who grew up there for a bit, and uh, excited for them. Thanks for tuning in, even on your even on your holiday. Campari spritz. Oh, 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 we are getting serious now. Hello, when in Rome. Oh, when in Rome. <laughs> when in Rome. I think we have confirmation. Yeah. Oh, Mom, yeah. Hello, Mom. I love you. Love Dad, too. You guys have fun. Yeah, we're glad to have you along. Yeah, they've been uh, really excited. Consistent fans love this whole crew and all the work you guys are doing. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, just uh, really, really thankful for all the folks ashore who are helping carry us on this expedition. It can't happen without you. All of our family, our friends, our loved ones, our communities, um, doing the doing the work of making things good and right and filled with aloha back home. Um, and. Uh, just apparently as important as those of us doing the work out here exploring. And apparently some excellent malasadas. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are getting close. Uh, we'll uh, have to be quiet here shortly, but yeah. we're hoping, hoping for a reappearance of our good friends, the oceanic white tips, and maybe some of our squid friends as well. Mm -hmm. Did you see any of those today? I didn't see him around the ship, but to be fair, I was sleeping most of the afternoon because I was up all last night yeah. uh, on ship to shore. So, but the day before, they hung out with us all day. So, Ooh, excellent. Lemon. <gasps> yes. Oh my gosh, I love your mom, Daniel. Oh, lemon chili spritz. There you go. Yeah. Get it. 
<laughs> I know they're having a good time. That's awesome. Oh. Um, um, we we uh we blew watered a little early. I don't I don't think I need to switch, Hans, unless you guys really want to, but we're gonna be up pretty shortly. Yeah, I mean yeah. most of us have to stay up for various things, so if if you wanna go back to bed. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you're welcome to hang out if you want. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we'll probably need to get off of this around 100 meters anyways. Yeah. We're going to have to get down to the lab and uh, start prepping. Is that Although, a... I'm sure Taylor Ann's already on it. Whoa. Oh, that was cool looking in Atlanta. Looks like the huh. That was very long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't think I know what music will be oh, playing down squid, in that lab. Squid. Yeah. Oh, I don't think you got the shrimp it was going after, though. Yeah, it looks like the shrimp got away this time. Maybe. It's coming back. Or is that another one? It's another one. We got. looks like we might have several squid. I think so, yeah. We will uh, be back with you. Uh, looks like just just about 12 hours from now um, on our next dive. I guess that'll be our 10th of the Ella Elmwana Coyote Expedition. 10th dive already? And I Doesn't think it looks like, like we're going to kick that one off, but then hand it over to the 12 to 4 crew pretty soon and tomorrow afternoon. But looking forward to being back with you all. It's uh, You really brighten up this control van with your spirits, with mm -hmm. your lights, and your kukui. Yeah, we appreciate all of you. I'm going to I'm gonna stay here and watch, but I'm going to sign off. Yep. Ahoy, ahoy, yep. Have a good one. Mahalo nui, everybody. Mahalo nui, ahoy ho. You got your camera pointed up? Uh, I get a bundle. Just hit 60 meters. And... Yeah, 50. You gotta stop. Yep.
Yeah. Yeah. Stopped. Yeah. Yeah, we're ready for the 50 meter handover. Copy that. We are ready to take control. Bridge, bridge, back deck. Are we clear to continue with this recovery? Charlie to recover. Copy that. Are they changing the heading? Falling off to the starboard side. He's always going to do something. Uh. What? Is that what it's falling for? Atalanta is on the surface. Copy that. Can okay, you lights?
like it this, when things are left alone, but whatever. <laughs> I know.